not allowed to have contact with the family of the victim. 22 years later, the man who murdered Marika de Klerk is soon to be free. Good news, more people have jobs this quarter and ministers and their lack of competence in the crosshairs. Hello, I'm Jane Dutton. Remember to like and subscribe. This is Eyewitness News. In a country where murder is rampant, it was one that made international headlines. The fatal attack on former First Lady Marika de Klerk 22 years ago. Now the killer has been granted parole. Luyanda Mboniswa was sentenced to life in prison at the age of 21 for the 2001 murder of former President F.W. de Klerk's wife. Boniswa was considered for parole placement, having served the minimum required time and will be a free man by the end of the month. Mboniswa will be admitted into the system of community corrections whereby he is expected to comply with a specific set of parole conditions for the rest of his natural life. And some of his parole conditions are that he has to be restricted to his magisterial district and is not allowed to have contact with the family of the victim. Mboniswa worked at the complex as a security guard. The accused in the Babita Diokaran murder case looks set to enter into a plea agreement. The case was on the roll in the Joburg High Court today for the possible start of the trial, but the accused wound up appearing only briefly in the dock, and the case was postponed again, this time until next week, for the agreement to be finalized. What this means is that if it goes ahead as planned, the case will not go to trial, and the six accused, believed to be the hetman, have been remanded in custody. They were previously denied bail. The Akran was a high-ranking official in the Gauteng Health Department. In the weeks leading up to her death, she flagged hundreds of millions of rands in dodgy payments out of Tembisa Hospital. Her murder is widely thought to have been a hit. Now to a plethora of claims of corruption and incompetence leveled at those holding the highest of offices. The minister in the presidency, Kumbutso Ntaveni, has topped a parliamentary list of ministers who have not met deadlines in the last quarter to respond to MPs' questions. She leads with 18 unanswered questions, followed by the Minister of Defence, Tandi Modisa, and the Minister of Public Works, Sikhle Zikalala. Hot on their heels, Police Minister Becky Klele, Minister of Public Enterprises, Pravin Gordon, and the Minister in the Presidency for Women, Nkosazana Dlamini Zuma. Parliamentary rules gives ministers 10 days to answer written parliamentary questions put to them by MPs. When the minister in the very presidency neglects and is the worst offender in the last term, it then begs the question, does even this administration value the important role that parliament plays? Speaker of Joburg Council, Colleen Makubele, says her office is seeking advice on the claims of corruption levelled against Joburg's economic development MMC, Nomoya Nisi. Action SA has opened a corruption case against her, and she's accused of trying to direct close to a million rand from the Johannesburg Property Company to settle an invoice for the ANC Youth League's elective conference last month. We feel that we need uh, clarity. We are seeking legal advice to ascertain, is this a criminal offence that must be left with that authority? We are expecting this legal advice by end of next week, latest. And the ANC Youth League is blaming Minister of Public Enterprises, Pravin Gordon, for the sorry state of the SOEs and the Employment Minister, Tulas Ngoyesi, for the high unemployment rate, saying Ngoyesi is the Minister for Unemployment instead. Ngoyesi will be happy to hear that as are we, South Africa's official unemployment rate has decreased by 0.3 percentage points in the second quarter. It came in at 32.6% for the period between April and June, compared to the previous quarter's 32.9%. Uh, there was a way down from manufacturing, which lost 96,000 jobs, and finance uh, lost 68,000 jobs. The number of employed people in the country currently stands at 16.3 million, compared to at least 23 million who are without jobs. Not welcome in the DA-led moonshot pact, is the ANC looking to the Zulu king for help ahead of the elections? The ANC is here in Bazulu Natal to come 
and pay our respects to His Majesty the King and uh, to perform what is known in this is as water we We don't see anything untoward about the late start of the meeting because again we do believe that the King has kept has got to be waited on and so we are quite excited we're looking forward to that interaction with His Majesty. Of course, further to that, we're going to be then having our own internal organizational meetings, starting with a meeting with provincial office bearers, a meeting with the extended provincial executive committee that will include the leagues and all our um, allied formations, and then lastly, interactions with our public deployees in the provincial government led by the Premier. Spain is the first team to book their spot in the final of the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup. Here's more from the tournament in Australia and New Zealand. Spain have reached a historic first ever FIFA Women's World Cup final following a 2-1 win over Sweden. It's an amazing turnaround for Jorge Vilda and his side because this time last year he was fielding calls for him to step down as coach as players questioned his management style. Without the 15 players that have boycotted the national team, he's now achieved this historic feat who they'll face in Sunday's finale will be decided on Wednesday morning. That's when co-hosts Australia take on England. The last time the Matildas and the Lionesses met, it was Australia that ran out winners. Tala Gelem Ganga, Eyewitness New Sport. And that's it from me, Jane Dutton. See you for more tomorrow, same time, same place. And remember to like and subscribe. Eyewitness News, in touch, in tune and independent. For the latest, log on to ewn.co.za or ewn.mobi.